Okay, here we go again, West again. Finally, I've got my pictures uploaded. Uh, a lot of you out there have asked, uh, you know, if, if I made a video, which I didn't because I'm really new at this uh, YouTube stuff. But I did take a lot of pictures and you've asked to, if I could put them up and maybe uh, try to explain how I did some of these things. <clears throat> again, I'm in a small shop and this is what uh, this video is specifically for, for you guys in a, like a garage like I am and, uh, you know, uh, it, it's hard. You, you, you can't keep a lot of material unless your outside looks like Tobacco Road and uh, uh, you know, you've got to move stuff around, but it can be done. And uh, I'll show you uh, how I was working on saw horses for four, over four and a half years with the same sheet of three quarter plywood, but it served me well. And uh, now I've got a bench. So uh, with that, uh, let's get right into these, uh, uh, these pictures and uh, see if I can uh, do you guys any justice. And of course, I don't have a website. If you uh, have any questions, I put my email address at the beginning of this uh, uh, upload so that you can use it. And uh, anytime you've got a question, ask me. Let me know. I'll I'll try to do the best I can uh, with what I know. And uh, other than that, uh, let's uh, let's get into it. Okay. We'll see you then. Okay. This is the uh, plywood bench I was telling you about, and uh, on it. Uh, you can't quite see all the materials in the back, but uh, all my material came in two by six construction, uh, dug fir, uh, kiln dried, clear, no knot whatsoever, and uh, vertical grain, or, or as for, you know, quarter sawn, you might call it. And it was beautiful wood. And what was also beneficial for me is S4S, the surface both on four sides. So I didn't have to size it like I would have probably maple and then have a lot of loss and everything. Uh, Saved me a lot of time, a lot of extra work. Yeah, I mean, it was beautiful. And there you can see my two split tops there that I glued. And all my members uh, were glued three boards at a time. That way I could run them through my planers. And again, that little Rockwell planter did a great job. As small as it is, like a toy, and yet that thing did a wonderful job. And um, so there are my two uh, tops there. And um, you can see a couple of, I believe, leg members uh, up above on top uh, with the tenon. And, uh, other than that, in the foreground is the one cross member where the uh, screw of my uh, uh, my leg vise that goes into it. I'm putting the Dutchman in there. Uh, I don't know what you guys call it now. That's why I call it the Dutchman. But uh, why, you know, again, why I sealed it up? I, I just wanted to, you know, uh, make it clean, I guess, looking, you know. Uh, if I had pretty much the uh, confidence in what I did that I wouldn't have to ever go back in there. And uh, if I did, I could always dig it out. But, I wanted something really nice and neat, you know, I don't like boards hanging at the bottom. I just don't like that style of uh, <clears throat> leg vice, and uh, that's uh, about all I got to say about that. Okay, here in this picture, uh, you can see, uh, I believe these are stretchers uh, for my bench, and again, you can see the, uh, the mortise uh, that I did. Now, I did all these mortises on my, uh, uh, my chop saw, um, and I had it all set up nice and square so i had no problems as far as uh not even you know angles or whatnot everything is nice and square and a good sharp blade and uh there are my other uh boards on the table you can see my cramp space that i was working in and uh other than that let's uh, go to something else okay here is a picture of some dry assembly of the legs the four legs and the other cross members that uh go on each end of uh, my bench both top and bottom I've got one uh, at the you know on both ends uh, some benches just have one at the top or just at the bottom I've got them top and bottom okay here we go I've had a lot of requests asking me how I did my my dovetails and uh, I've always been very good with a handsaw uh, I used to do a lot of paneling uh, with a handsaw 
uh, I don't know. It's just always never been a, a problem for me. And uh, that's how I cut my, my dovetails uh, here on this bench and a little pairing uh, to clean it up. And that's, that's about it. It really wasn't uh, a big a deal for me. And that's uh, about all I have to say about that. Okay, here's the, uh, the mock-up of my assembly for my leg vise made by Benchcrafted, and it's the retro uh, model with the scissor uh, configuration. You don't need that board at the bottom and all of this stuff. Uh, it is so much easier to use, uh, less complicated, but I highly recommend you take their heed and you read the instructions uh, two, three times over because uh, it is vital. It is, you have to really have it in your head exactly how things have to be, how they got to be cut, or else I guarantee you it'll bind. And um, that's what saved me years ago when I was an installer uh, installing panic hardware on doors. Uh, I could install any set of panic hardware. I had a good basic idea how it went, but I always read the instructions. There's always some little thing that you've got to keep in mind uh, with each uh, different model. And uh, it is a beautiful device. I highly recommend it, Benchcrafted and the retro uh, model. A little pricey, but I'm telling you, it's really worth it. It really is. Okay, moving right along. Here we have now the assembly uh, of uh, the bench. Uh, you can see that I've got it on that uh, those rollers uh, that I made, uh, the casters, and actually the, the wheels will flip to the inside of the, of the, the carcass so it'll sit on on pads that I put uh, quarter inch pads on each corner. And it's quite a unique thing that uh, I had to have to move this thing around. This thing is too big. I had to move it around and do several different, different things, you know. And I'd like to make another mention on that little quarter cable uh, six inch joint. I mean, I, I know you can't see it. You gotta take my word for it, but it is, those members are square and they are clean. That little, <laughs> a little bitty machine, I'm telling you, did a really good job. Of course, I had my, uh, you know, DeWalt uh, thickness planer too to, to size or anything, but I mean, I, it just shows what you can do with the most even small equipment. So, uh, you know, I've, I've worked with some really good machines back in Europe. We had some, I mean, the best I've ever worked with. Better than ones I've used here, I hate to, hate to say. Uh, but uh, uh, here's a little small machine that uh, did the job real well. and. Uh, that's the beginning of the uh, of the assembly. All the, uh, the mortise and tenon uh, are, are are dialed in with uh, walnut pegs and and glued, and I mean really glued well. Not just the glued the mortise and I glued the tenon, and I put a lot of glue on them and uh, set them up for uh, at least three to four days before I, I took clamps off. And so that's what I'll say about uh, all I have to say about that. Okay, here we have the bench. Stops and sit on top of it. Uh, of course, they're not secured; they're just sitting there. Uh, but I'll say again: these two tops are held down by two lag bolts on each end. A total of uh, eight lag bolts. Uh, each top has got two on each end, and, and uh, one is in a three-eighths hole, and the other one is in a three-quarter hole for movement. Um, Something else I'd like to mention is that um, uh, my uh, my dovetails, uh, they are not glued. They are waxed. Uh, you don't see the remaining boards attached yet, but uh, you can see how I did it. Uh, I cut the boards in between and one, one continuous board in the middle. And uh, the exterior boards will be uh, fitted to the dovetail. And they are glued uh, to themselves as a body but there is absolutely no glue in, in the dovetail at all. Uh, that whole uh, assembly there the, is made to where it can slide, the tops can slide right out. So uh, that is, I guess, about all I have to say on the tops, other than that they come out very square, uh, very unique. Okay, we're jumping ahead a little bit here because it shows the uh, top already set in place with the uh, Rockler quick release vise attached but what I want to do here is show the actual size of my bench and it measures 37 inches wide and I believe uh, 95 and a quarter inches long and I'm giving it to you in feet and inches not 
not hurting you with millimeters that like I like to use. But, uh, you know, it's a good sizable bench. And, uh, uh, again, I, I couldn't be more pleased with this uh, uh, split top bench. Uh, it, it, it's a great, uh, great design, really useful and very practical. And uh, that's all I have to say about that. All right, I have to say a few words about this leg assembly that I made. Uh, rollers, I should say, to move it around because, uh, believe me, uh, in a small place and a big uh, bench like that, I, I really had to have some way of getting uh, around. And uh, this little uh, little gizmo, uh, I, you know, I had some boards left over, and uh, which I had planned anyways to, to use. Uh, there's a, you'll see a one inch uh, peg that, uh, that goes into the bottom uh, of each leg and they're all membered. There's the peg right there and they're all membered. I mean, I should say numbered and uh, they've got a hinge so that uh, uh, if I want to just put it down without moving, I can just uh, raise it up and uh, and the legs will flip uh, towards the inside of the, uh, the bench. But uh, uh, there's the pad and, uh, when it's down on the ground, it, it rests on that pad. And uh, it, it, it worked like a charm. I'll tell you what, uh, I could have done it without it. It, it really helped me uh, in this build. Uh, I don't know what else I would have done. Other than that, uh, I'll always stay with this bench too. So I guess that's all I have to say about that. And of course, I have got to say something about this little device that I made so I could lift this doggone bench. This thing is heavy. Even though it wasn't complete, it was still getting a pretty doggone heavy. And this is what I made uh, that uh, because of the way the bench is designed, I could lift it and then place the two uh, uh, assemblies of wheels uh, on each end. And uh, I guess that's all I have to say about that. It's not really complicated, but it sure did the job. Here is that cross member where the screw for the leg vise goes into that uh, cross member and it's concealed. Again, I I closed it up. I could have left it open, but I closed it up. Uh, if you can look closely, you can see the Dutchman. Of, well, I don't know, that's the same term you guys use now, but uh, the Dutchman that I used to, uh, to close it up. And it was a pretty good fit. Uh, I showed you in my video, see if you can see it. Uh, but um, that's where the screw goes, and I had to alter my uh, my, my my tenon a little bit, so it still uh, went into the uh, the leg. But uh, that's uh, the um, uh, cross member for uh, the uh, bench crafter leg vice screw to go in there, and it's concealed. It's totally uh, locked down. All right, here is an example of how I do my mortising, which is not uh, complicated. I use a drill press. Uh, uh, in France, I had a really nice uh, machine that uh, did the mortising. It's like a chain, and it's a mortising machine. It's a full-on mortising machine. But here, I drilled holes, and I did not use my paring chisels to beat it out. I've got it there with a hammer. No, no. I used uh, regular metal um, uh, chisels that I can use a hammer, you know, and uh, uh, I keep those sharp and uh, they do just a good job, but I'm not about to beat my, my good paring chisels with, uh, you know, to, <laughs> to clean out a, a mortise. So uh, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Other than that, uh, uh, you know, you use the right tool for the right, uh, right job. Uh, and uh, I guess that's all I have to say about that. And what can I say about Paul Sellers? For a dog. Uh, I know the square ones are really good looking and uh, traditional and all that, but I'll tell you, uh, you're, I'm just sold on a round peg. Uh, it'll hold any kind of configuration, it does not have to be straight, I don't have to get shims and, and all that to, to accommodate a, a right angle. It'll turn and it'll hold anything, and uh, it's it's so easy to to make. And it's uh, I mean, again, the, the, the square ones are beautiful. They're traditional, um, 
and there's a lot of different uh, ways of making them and you know, what the angles and the little hooks and whatnot. But uh, uh, I, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying that uh, I like things that work and function. Uh, this is a workbench. This is not a piece of furniture. This is a workbench, and I want it to work and function. And this is simple. If I break one, which I doubt it, but if I break one, easy to repair. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's very inexpensive. It, Cost-wise, it's like nothing. So uh, I'm just sold on them. I, I would never have anything other than a, a round peg and mine are made out of just pop, uh, popper. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, not even a, not even a, 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 a maple. It's just, a, I believe it's poplar, yeah. Uh, dowel. You could use maple dowels or oak, whatever. But, uh, you know, it's what I had and I used and it works. Working fine. Thank you. And a few words for this uh, split top bench is the, uh, the filler that goes in between the two tops. Now, I have to uh, admit my ignorance here. I don't know what the exact name of this piece should be. It's a sleeve of some type. It's a filler. I don't know. It, 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 it fills the gap. It also has a purpose. You can put tools in the slots. It also uh, sits flush with the top. And also, you take it out and flip it over and put it back in and it has a, a about a half inch lip which it is a half inch lip i should say so that you can put a stock up against it and work up against it and um, very versatile i mean it, it's an ingenious idea simple to make again and uh you know some of the best things are very simple in nature and in, in concept and uh as well as to to be made so uh uh, I made mine out of oak, uh, three uh, pieces of uh, one by six, and uh, I like the contrast of the wood. And it's sturdy; it'll take a beating, you know, uh, tools going in and out and everything. But uh, don't mean to be beating it up, but it's a good piece of wood. So um, yeah, again, it can, it, can, it can be removed, and you can put clamps in there uh, uh, to. Uh, help uh, clamp a certain uh, project, a piece or whatever. So it really is very, very functional. And again, I like things that work and function well. And uh, I'm glad I've got a split top. It's, uh, it's a pretty ingenious way to go. And that's about all I have to say about that. And here we have uh, these uh, three one by six oak boards that are glued together. And uh, now I'm putting the uh, finishing uh, touches on it with some stain and uh, usually I use Watco oil and uh, putting some uh, I'll put some varnish on it uh, anyways uh, it just uh, looks nice it's uh, clean it's uh, pristine uh, and it fu functions functions well serves a purpose uh, it's an ingenious invention in my opinion and, uh, again I'm, I'm glad I went to this split top I'm glad I couldn't lift that big top so I had to go to a split top because it's really the way to go and uh, with that uh, we'll move on and here we're getting out of something really where the top is already mentioned to the body uh, the frame of the table and uh, I'm now applying the boards to the as you would call the dovetails or the lakes uh, there are three boards that finish the, uh, the each top, and uh, as you can see, uh, uh, you start with the, the first board that cuts in between the two vertical pieces, and then after that, glued. And again, I, I glue my, my boards up for three days, three four days. And then I put a continuous piece all the way through the slot and glue that up, and then the last board, which is the face. It's fitted between the dovetails, and uh, that's glued up. And as again, it's glued for three, four days, and uh, uh, it fitted real nice. And uh, easy way of doing it, you know. It's easy way out. Uh, not everything's got to be done, uh, you know, the, the hardest way. And it works. It functions and it works. And that's what I like. And here's a scene of my uh, my. Uh, <clears throat> leg vice and uh, my uh, chunk of uh, oak that I used uh, to 
you know, to, to make that uh, the advice. Uh, here's another view of the, uh, of some of the interior, uh, you know, uh, woodwork you've got to do. And it's, again, it's got to be very precise. It may look simple. It is simple. But it has to be precise or else this thing will bind on you. And uh, other than that, uh, you know, uh, you just take your time and really get it within your head how, how it's got to go. And, uh, you can see that one bolt's offset, like I tell you before, to accommodate the bolt that's going through the member. And I got the Dutchman there. And, uh, but um, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful vice. Uh, uh, bench crafted, uh, just excellent work. Captain Crafters. There's another shot of the the two bolts. One's offset. The, see the bolt to the left is in a bigger hole, which is a three quarter hole. And uh, uh, here you can see both of them. So uh, this top can come off. You'll see later in some of these uh, glue ups as you see the uh, the dovetail. It may look like there's. Uh, glue on them and there is glue splashed around but the uh, again the uh, the members that can that make up the dovetail I put wax all around them so even if glue got on them they wouldn't stick stick it's uh, it's heavily waxed all the way around so uh, uh, you, even you might see some some telltale signs of glue there like like for their example uh, it looks like glue well there may be glue there but uh, believe me it is waxed and it's not glued to the uh, to the dovetail at all the whole uh, you know uh, assembly there so um, can't never have any enough clamps and uh, uh, I've got some pretty good ones I've got some pretty good quality clamps what else uh, it's just uh, you know uh, you've just got to glue it up right and to not damage your wood. Uh, here's another scene of it where the wood is thick in size. Later on, after I got everything glued up, I hand planed them down with my uh, uh, number eight uh, Lee Nelson, Love Nelson uh, joiner. And, uh, uh, you know, that's about it. Uh, it's a pretty simple way of doing it. Uh, it may be impressive to people who don't know really any better, but it's, uh, it's an easy way out of you know, getting a real nice job done. And there again, some uh, carpet, uh, carpet, uh, cardboard, you know, protecting my uh, my bench from any kind of glue and all that. And, uh, uh, I guess that's uh, uh, again just more views of how I got it all clamped up and, uh, and again I keep saying you know, these things set up for a minimum three to four days I, and I know you can take them off in an hour or so a few hours um, the kind of work I'm used to doing uh, we never did and never had problems and, uh, I know sometimes if you're in a time constraint you know you have to do things like that and it'll work but, uh, you know I've got the time so I do it right and I uh, uh, you know I take the time and and uh, I guess we're going to have another shot of the uh, leg vice assembly there and the bench on the wheels. And here's my uh, Rockler uh, quick release uh, end vice. That is a great vice, I'm telling you. I, I can't say enough about that quick release vice. It is so smooth acting and it really works well. Uh, I just, <laughs> there's nothing you can't clamp on a bench like this. Nothing. It, it, it's so versatile. So, uh, again, it's beefy. That's thick, all you know. The top's that thick all the way across. Uh, 637, 38 pounds, that thing weighs. That doesn't include the, uh, the wheels. But, uh, of course, that's just uh, a roller around. And a couple of more uh, views of, uh, of my bench here. Kind of winding things up. Uh, uh, I'm really glad I did it. Uh, you know, I, I just need to find someone who I can pass it on to. Uh, I'd hate to think I, I kick off and this thing's left to some idiot that's going to beat on it or, I don't know, tune up his motorcycle engines on it or something. And doesn't even know, uh, you know how to use it. 
tools and everything are going to go with this bench. Uh, somehow I got to find someone or some outfit to give it to. And a shot of my dovetails. Uh, I actually call it dovetail. It's, uh, it's, it's in a leg assembly, but uh, you see the continuous board. The other one's cut into it uh, the way it's made. So uh, just uh, another really good way of doing something, uh, I think. And, uh, um, it's beautiful. I, mean, I, I, I think it's just beautiful. Oh, uh, uh, and again, it's a workbench. So, um, uh, what else? You see, you know, marks here. We can all sand it off and everything after it's all done. Another shot coming up here: the leg vise uh, assembly, there, the screw, and all that. Uh, and uh, you see a slot down there for my dead man. I thought about the angle they used to use for the dead man. You know, at the bottom. But you know, I just for some reason I just don't like it. That's why I put a three-quarter uh, uh, oak in that slot down there for my dead man, uh, sliding back and forth. I just didn't want to go that way. And then the, the, the center section there is what I used. I put a panel down there. And I put and a lid on top. That's where I put my tools uh, on a base. I couldn't see having that big wasted spacer at the bottom. So uh, uh, you know that space is all. You know, tool storage. Now I put my planes down there and my chisels, other well, things that I'm going to use. Uh, you know, most of the time right there at the bench. And uh, uh, I thought about putting them in the cab up on the wall, but uh, nah. Uh, I like them down here where they're covered. I don't like them exposed to, to the moisture after all. It's a garage, you know. So I don't. I like my my metal, you know, uh, covered where it's not ex exposed to moisture and what have you. And uh, there again, does the uh, chop on my. Uh, heavy chop on my uh, leg vise and um, what else I got over here oh another shot of the scissors uh, that, I mean, that is a genius invention that uh, simple very simple but I mean I'd say sharp instead of having to put that board at the bottom putting a screwdriver or a dowel in between every half inch or so or whatever I know it's traditional and some guys like tradition nothing wrong with it but for me when I'm in there I'm getting I'm working you know, I had a screw. I had the same thing at France. And to screw that thing out a bunch of inches, you know, all that, and put a, you know, my dowel in there uh, to, to secure it. I mean, you, you get used to it, but what a drag. I tell you, you, you get used to this leg vice, and uh, you thought you died and gone to heaven. So um, never go back, you know. So there's that Dutchman I'm telling you about. You can see the end grain there, but. Uh, Sides, uh, I don't know, you can't see it. Uh, um, bad, no big deal. I mean, you know, I'm sure you guys can do it too. No big deal. I'm not trying to brag on it. Um, other than that, just a few more shots of the, the bolts in there and how the boards fit together, the, the timbers fit together, nice and square and tight. And, uh, um, I just couldn't be any happier, and I want to thank you guys for. You know, take any interest in asking me about this bench. And again, if you have any questions, uh, you know, uh, please feel free to contact me. And uh, um, again, uh, excuse my poor quality of uh, videos. But I'm not. Um, I'm new at this. And I don't have a lot of equipment at all. And, uh, other than that, uh, I want to thank everyone who's uh, you know contacted me and said uh, nice things. I really appreciate it. And uh, with that, I wish you guys all the best and hope you have a, a great time uh, woodworking. And remember, I'm looking for someone to pass this on to, so pass the word, okay? Bye-bye.